you said that um, you are skeptical of evolution as it's defined today. What would be a simple uh, layman's uh, definition of evolution as it stands today? Uh, the theory of universal common descent, uh, that, that we hearken back to common ancestors with, with uh, uh, for example, for people it would be with other hominids that we, we hearken back to a common ancestor, and that the natural variations that occur from generation to generation. So that's what, that's what uh, evolution is, is talking about okay. today. Now there's a, there's, um, there are uh, Christians, there's a movement in, you know, Christianity today where there are people uh, endorsing mm -hmm. evolution and saying evolution fits fine with the Bible, it's good to go. Uh, the Pope said that. Um, there's a group called Logos that uh, Francis Collins uh, initiated. Um, and yet you say, no, I, I reject that. Um, what, what's going on here? Why is there a difference of opinion regarding, for example, Francis Collins' view and um, your view? So, so I, I certainly see where they're coming from. If you look at universal common descent, there are lots and lots of indicators that look like, indeed, there is a common ancestor between us and other hominids, say mm -hmm. the chimpanzee. And I understand what they're saying. And I've talked with Francis Collins. I've talked with other people about this. And I'm quite open in discussing with them. And, I've, and, and, and uh, uh, I want to learn from them. But every time I ask them for a mechanism, what is the mechanism by which you get this change? So, so even if I were to give you there is life now, so, so we're not talking about the origin of life, how do you get the mechanism of change so that you get a change, say, in body plans? Everything we see, and they'll often quote to you the immune system. The immune system is made to change. It changes based on what it is confronted with, and it morphs and it changes as it should. That's how we survive. To deal with different but, flu but, viruses and things right, like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. but you never, you never see the immune system becoming a digestive system. It remains an immune system. It doesn't change beyond an immune system. It doesn't become an auditory system. So now does, Fran does Francis Collin believe that the mechanism is available to be able to do that sort of change? Yes, he says the mechanism is available, and I've asked him for the articles on the mechanisms, and what he has sent me is two papers which showed a bunch of fish heads. That means nothing to the chemist. You, when, you, when we say mechanism, we have to be able to show the chemistry at which you get changes. There is no model for the chemistry of changes. I, I, I had when a, you say a, chemistry of changes, what, 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 how, how is that? So are you talking about genes? What are you talking about exactly? Yeah, so, so if, if you want to change genes at the, at the genome level, you have to have something that is going to do this. So in other words, your, your genes are going to code for proteins that are going to do the assembly of the organisms. How do you get that change at the genomic level to do that sort of body plan change to change one group into another? All so of my, that is based on biochemistry. You have to show biochemical mechanisms, and it is not there. My daughter has cystic fibrosis, so she has you know, changes on the genomic level, her chromosomes and so forth. And so, so somebody says, hey, this is a mutation and this is not a good mutation, but there are mutations out there that are good that will fuel change in a positive direction over millions and millions of years. How do you respond to something like that? So how does that change occur? How, does, how do you know what you're going to when it's never been made before? And how do you show the mechanism by which that change occurs? So in other words, if you take something like cystic fibrosis, you can show that there were changes, there were mutations that occurred that did that. You can't show a mechanism for a change in body plans. Hmm. You don't see that. There is no mechanism there. And when I, you say I, a change yeah. in body plans, are you like talking about like adding wings or something? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah, adding wings or elongating legs and, 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 and this sort of thing. That is the, the level of change that we're talking about that you have to have happening all the time. When you talk about evolution of a complex system, yeah, we're talking we're talking about changes of a complex system in that 
degree, not tiny little changes, small changes like an immune system does. That we see it is demonstrated. That we see all the time. So I have no contest with that. And if you just look at universal common descent, and this is what I think happens. You take biologists, you take geneticists that do not deal on a molecular level. This is why I started out with you speaking about how chemists deal at a molecular level. They think at the molecular level that things happen. If you think at a global level and you fly over at 30,000 feet like a biologist does, mm -hmm. then you can see all sorts of things. But it's when you get into the details, you, you land in that city, you go in and you see the complexity within a city. You see, you see the piping system and, and, and the complex system. This doesn't happen on its own. Molecules don't do this, this type of thing. Biology is so utterly amazing. Yeah. But you can't now show me a mechanism by you. Not only can they not show the mechanism, they can't even propose a mechanism. They will not even show me a proposal. And I've asked them. They've sent me articles, articles, 70 articles. One guy sent me on the immune system. And I went through every one of them. I said, where is the molecular level change? Where is the change you're talking about where you can see evolution of a complex system where you see that gross level change that you're saying? I said, you don't even have to give me the mechanism. Just show me a proposal on how you think it might occur. Mm. That's not even there. Wow. So, so there's just a lot missing there. It has nothing, nothing to do with my faith. I'm not trying to prove God by this at all. It's nothing to do with my faith. I'm just looking at the science. Oh, that's interesting. That's what I was going to ask you is, oh, so would you say that your, your faith in the Bible, because it talks about, you know, uh, in the beginning God created and, and the six days of creation and all this stuff, um, but you're you're arguing that this has this it's not your biblical faith informing your science it's your science informing your views on origins and these sorts of things. Absolutely. Wow. That's, now, that's, it, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly a Bible believer, but I'm able to segregate that yeah. and to say, look, I can't bring that into my chemistry classroom. I am just going to use the science itself, and I think the science itself craters what people call science. Now, have you have you as you've explored this more and more, do you feel that your science is lining up with what you read in the Bible? Uh, you know, for example, historically and these sorts of things. Um, are you finding uh, things disjointed or are you finding that they're, they're all together? So, um, you know, what, what I read in the Bible, what I read in the Genesis account mm -hmm. is that God, being the supernatural being that he is, spoke these things into existence. And there was this pattern where he got to more and more complex creatures so that on the sixth day of creation, he, he finally gets to the, the, the formation of a human being. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a very global level. I deal in science at a molecular level. I, I don't have any construct for that in my Bible. And so f for me, I certainly am a person of faith and I believe the scriptures, but it's not, it, 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 if somebody could present to me a model for evolution and show me that you can get evolution of a complex system and you had the chemistry, you had the mechanism behind this, I would concur and I would say, okay, I have misunderstood, you, you, you know, I, maybe I've been misunderstanding the allegory behind the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. but it won't upset my faith one bit. I mean, there's many things that I misinterpret. You know, the Bible says something, and then, then I, um, then I, all of a sudden, I understand that in the Hebrew it really says this and this yeah. and this. Okay, well, I had a misinterpretation. That my life is filled with misinterpretations. Yeah. Ask my yeah. wife. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't understand <laughs> exactly. her all the time. Exactly. If you haven't been listening in, or if you're just tuning in, he is a synthetic organic chemist. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry from Syracuse University, a PhD in Synthetic Organic and Organometallic Chemistry from Purdue University. His website is jmtour.com, and he has been selected as one of the most influential scientists in the world today uh, by bestschools.org, and uh, also Scientist of the Year in 2013 by R&D Magazine. And uh, he is a Bible-believing Christian and uh, grew up in New York, uh, Jewish. And uh, Dr. Tour, how did your parents respond to your decision to, to accept Christ as Savior? Well, when I first became a believer, it, it hurt them, but we were quite secular Jews, so it wasn't like they had a funeral for me or they sat Shiva or they turned around the mirrors, which certainly happens to some Jews. Mm -hmm. But, but um, 
uh, uh, they thought it was a fad and that I'd, I'd pass through it. But my, my mother, um, you know, she was really concerned about me, so I asked her to read the scriptures, and, and uh, I asked her to go ahead and, and uh, uh, read the New Testament. And she read the New Testament, and I asked her what she thought. She said, well, I, I don't blame them for killing Jesus after the things that he said. I said who, she said, who is he to, to tell these Jewish leaders that have devoted their lives and to call them whitewashed tombs and blind guides leading the blind? And, and uh, you know, when you think about it, that's actually what you should say. If you, don't, if you don't accept them as Lord, it was really quite radical. Then I asked her to read the Old Testament, and most Jews are like most Baptists. They've never read their own scriptures, and so she, <laughs> she, read, she, read the, uh, she read the entire Old Testament, and she was, you, you know, she then understood the picture of God and how merciful God had been and how much God had warned the Jewish people certain things would happen, and it happened just like God warned them. And then several years went by, and she started reading the New Testament again. And while she was reading the New Testament she, she, and reading a, 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 the case for Christ, uh, she got saved at wow. the age of 70. And so this is what I tell people. It's very difficult to read the New Testament twice and not get saved. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't great. gotten saved on the first passage through, usually on the second passage through, you're going to get saved. That book can stand on its own and draw people to the Lord. But So she got saved at the age of 70, and my father is still unsaved. He's 88 today, and, uh, um, and I continue to share with him. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Well, um, that, that's pretty amazing. Now, do you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have a brother and a sister, neither of, 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 of whom is saved. Mm. And uh, so, so what's next for you as far as, you know, what you're doing and everything? How, how is God leading you? You said you pray for God's will, uh, you know, all the time. Uh, where, what do you see the future looking like? Okay, so, so, you know, I'm just one little man in one nanometer-sized portion of the earth. Mm. And so he's given me a place to shine in, and I want to shine in this place. Uh, he's given me as a career, uh, I'm a research scientist, and I pray all the time for creativity. Mm -hmm. Creativity in my work, understanding, and to, to have uh, uh, good advances. So I pray for this all the time. The other thing that I, I, I pray for is, is I pray for an understanding of the scriptures when I'm reading them so that I'll be able to teach them and instruct others that I'd be passionate and excited enough that young people would see my passion and to say, I want to be like that. I want to know the Bible like he knows it mm -hmm. and be drawn into the scriptures because I know if a young person takes hold of the word of God and makes it their daily meditation, their lives will be okay. Even if they die tomorrow, if they, if they get cancer, whatever comes, they will get through this. They will they will they will succeed in life whether they live or die whatever's there if they are meditating on the scriptures it will help their lives it will bless their families it will bring up generations of children after them that will be blessed it will cause their marriages to stay together in this day and age when, when marriages are so under attack mm -hmm. that if they will get in the scriptures they don't need me anymore once they're in the scriptures they'll be fine this is what I want to reflect to them. So, so this is what I'm driving toward. That's a powerful message. Now, do you think that, um, you know, with science and everything, do you think we're going to come to a conclusion about evolution? Do you think that there's going to be some point at which, you know, you're going to have a, a turning? Or is there a turning taking place? Or is that not happening? I mean, because we have all these scientists coming out like yourself and others. There's that website, descentfromdarwin.org, and you've got people like Michael Behe and others who are all saying this is ridiculous and impossible and Doug Axe came out with a book just saying it's you know the 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 numbers statistically it's just ridiculous do you think that there's going to be any kind of a turning in the scientific community or do you think this is just going to be a battle that's just going to be ongoing well i hear the people that you're citing and the people that are contrary to to all this thinking that 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 the evolutionists are going to are going to cave in the next decade or two I don't think so. I think that they are, they are becoming more entrenched. But what we're finding are more and more problems. So in other words, if you take the genome, the 1.5% of the genome that people look at, 1.5% of the DNA, that's it, that they look at yeah. to show the correlations between us and other hominids, between us and the chimpanzees. If you look at that 1.5%, there are just so many portions of overlap. But 
Now they're finding in what formerly was called junk DNA, no longer call that, it's called intergenic DNA, the, the other 98.5%. And they're seeing made large portions of differences in those portions. And that's, that's being done not through a Christian program, but a project called Project ENCODE. Project ENCODE. And where they're looking at these different portions and there are gross differences between human beings and other hominids. And then there's also something called the orphan genes. These are genes that are specific to certain organisms and they're finding more and more of those. Now they're finding thousands of them that are unique to certain species. And the significance so the there is that this, if they're unique, they, it means they haven't evolved. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that, that it's not showing a path of common descendancy. Mm. That's what I can say. Okay. It's not showing a path of common descendancy. And so what they try to do is, is somehow uh, downplay the, the effect of these orphan genes or of the things being recognized by ENCODE. But what's happening now is so many of these are being found, you can't ignore them anymore. And so this... This 98.5% of the DNA is showing the gross differences. And then there's the other things we just absolutely don't understand is if you look at a hominid brain, if you look at, 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 at uh, 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 monkeys type brains versus human brains, that, 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 uh, uh, that from a gross level, that they are very much the same. From when we look at them chemically, they look the same. But we are so different in what human beings can do with symbolism, which is mathematics, which is music, things that we do in extrapolation and communication. We're so much different, and we can't even define what it is, what are the differences anatomically and chemically between our brains and their brains that have done this. I've even had a geneticist who's, who's, who's all for universal common descent to say, yeah, well, if there was an injection from God, it happened between, <laughs> between you know, that step from other hominids to humans, because if you look at our brains, we're just so much different in the way we act, but it's, but there's something but, but there's so many other similarities to it. So there's a lot there we don't understand. But I don't see, I don't see the evolutionists waving the white flag anytime soon. <laughs>